let's do some advanced factoring. Let's say you were given something like this, 2x squared minus 4x. You can always refer back to that process. Alright, so let's make a note of that up here. Always refer to process. from previous video. Notice how there is a number that can go into both 4 and 2. And that would be 2. also have x's in both terms. So I can pull out an x. 2 divided by 2 would just be 1. x squared divided by x is just x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. x divided by x is, just, is 1. So this is just 2x times x minus 2. So this is common factor. Just find a term that goes into everything that's in your equation. How about something like this? 5x cubed minus 25x squared. Well, I know my number is going to be 5, but now I'm going to pull out x squared. Always use lowest exponent of variable. So that's going to leave me with 1. x cubed divided by x squared is just x. Minus 25 divided by 5 is 5. No x is left. So this is 5x squared times x minus 5. And that's all there is for a common factor. All right, not an exceptionally hard one, but one that kind of gets overlooked. So now let's look at this. x squared minus 4. factor this. There's no middle term. So no middle term. Both A and C are perfect squares. So this is called difference of two perfect squares. It's going to be x plus square root and x minus square root. Which we know that's just going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now, how about something like this? Still are both perfect squares. All even exponents are perfect squares.
So if I factor this one, I'd have x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. And that one can be factored again. So I still have the x squared plus 4. But this one's going to be times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And that's the difference of two perfect squares. It's just square root of, of the first term plus and minus the square root of the second term. And you have to just keep going until you've got all the terms factored. Now, those I know are fairly simple. That's why I'm kind of going through them relatively quickly. What if you're given something like this? Two x squared plus three x plus one. No common factor, and a is greater than one. What do we do? Two ways to do this. First I'm going to show you is factor as always. Now I've got 2x squared here, so one of my terms is 2x, the other one's x. And this one's pretty easy. The only things that multiply to 1 are just positive 1 and positive 1, or negative 1 and negative 1. The only difference is that these are going to be multiplied by 2. You have to think with FOIL. It does require a little bit of critical thinking. So if I put the 1 here and the 1 here, if I get rid of that, I get 2x squared plus 2x plus x plus 1. 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, that's the one I want. Alright, you have to do it out to be sure. The other option, I'm just going to rewrite it so we have it in front of us, 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, it's called arcing. So what you do, multiply a and c. So I'm going to take this, multiply into there. x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I'm going to factor the new equation. And this is one that we had before. It's x plus 2, x plus 1.
Now here's the trick. Divide each number by A. So it's going to be x plus 2 over 2 times x plus 1 over 2. Then reduce. Get x plus 1. Now this one I'm just going to tell you what to do here. Take the denominator, move it in front of x. 2x plus 1. The reason why that works out is if I show you over here, we have x plus 1 half. In this case, we're going to set it equal to 0. I'm basically multiplying each term by 2. That will cancel out there. I'm left with 2x plus 1 equals 0. Notice it's the same thing that we got before. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you can see how to do it one of these ways and why it works. Now, what if we had something like this? x squared plus 8x plus 12. Well, let's see. I'd have x and x. This is just to refresh you guys. 6 and 2, both positive. 6 and 2, both negative. 4 and 3, both positive. 4 and 3, both negative. 12 and 1, both positive. And both negative. And yes, it's going to be this one that's going to work. We can factor that pretty easily. But what happens if I change it just so slightly to this? I can't factor that. So what I'm going to do is in this case, this is where I use quadratic formula. stress this again. This is not on the math placement. Remember, these videos are not just for math placement, they're for all of your studies in math. That's why we're doing this. Here's the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All you're going to do in this one is just substitute in. Negative 8 plus minus square root 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13 all over 2 times 1. Now let's simplify it. Negative 8 plus minus square root 64 minus 52 all over 2. x equals negative 8 plus minus square root 64 minus 52 is 14. Or, sorry, 12. All over 2. 
Now, I'm going to have two answers, a positive and a minus. Well, I shouldn't phrase it like that. I should say that we're going to have one where we add negative 8 plus radical 12 over 2. And one where we subtract negative 8 minus radical 12 over 2 because of that sign there. And this is going to be the only time where I tell you it's okay to evaluate the radicals as a decimal. So you're going to get your calculator. And i got to set mine to scientific mode so I can use my square roots. And we have negative 8 minus square root of 12, and divide that value by 2. So for the positive, so for the plus 1, I get negative 5.732. And for the minus, negative 8 minus square root of 12, divided by 2, Oops, I did the minus. That actually is the minus. For the positive one, 8 negative plus square root 12 divide by 2. I get negative just around the three decimals. And that's really all there is to factoring. All right. Just follow the same process as you always do. Just look out for these exceptions. All right, and that's it for these lessons. Thank you, and I'll see you later.